Hello, I'm Chad Jenkins, and this is a brief overview of the syllabus for our course on the Grateful Dead. Here is our syllabus for this course on the Grateful Dead. Uh, you can, of course, read through the, the course objectives. I encourage you to do so. But the main thing that I want to highlight here is that while this is a course that is in many ways about the Grateful Dead, it's also an attempt to learn alongside and through the Grateful Dead. So you will be able to write uh, some of your writing assignments can be about other artists in other bands, but thinking through the ideals or the philosophies, if you will, or the aesthetics of the Grateful Dead. And we'll, we'll develop what that means as we, we go along. The course requirements for this course, I think, are quite exciting. There are going to be some application worksheets, and you can look on, on another video, an accompanying video, to see what that involves. But there are five of those that you have to do, um, and then there are two others that you can do for extra credit. So there are seven available total um, but you only have to do five and this is your only real opportunity for extra credit so if you're looking to sort of sew up your your um, grade here this is a way or at least to bolster it this is a way to do that then there's large writing assignment number one um, and there's a, it's already posted to our blackboard site and to the Dropbox and it's about people that are associated with the band that aren't strictly speaking members of the band, but that helped to make them run the way they did. Um, and so you'll, you'll read that assignment and it'll be a relatively short paper. It's three pages. I'd rather it not be any less or any more, three double spaced pages and your sources would be on a fourth page. So I guess in that sense, four pages, then you have a second large writing assignment. And this is, uh, you can see it's the largest it's worth the most points because it's the largest assignment. It's uh, an eight-page paper on cover songs. And you're going to think about the phenomena, phenomenon of the cover song. And then you'll talk about uh, one of the Grateful Dead cover songs. Or if you prefer to pick another artist that used the cover song, as long as it's a song that um, they recorded multiple times live and, and in the studio, or at least multiple live occasions where there's some change, right? Not all artists do that, of course. Some artists figure out a way to play a cover and then every time they play it, that's how they play it. But I'm interested in cover songs that develop over the course of, um, of a group's career or an artist's career. So read the instructions there. And if, if you have um, some other group that you're interested in doing, um, then you can, of course, ask me uh, for approval. Um, and as long as it's reasonable, I'll approve. So for instance, jazz would be an easy thing to do, right? Think of how many times um, uh, Joe Pass, for instance, uh, recorded How High the Moon, right? And did them in very different ways. So you, that would be a way to, to do it without it necessarily being about the dead. Then you have a mystery track assignment. I got this idea from, of course, dead.net, a very important website for the Grateful Dead. In November, they, they send out 30 tracks and you have uh, a day each. So you have 24 hours to uh, figure out each track by looking through web resources. Here you have a lot longer than that, so it's going to be much easier. But you will be assigned a track and that will come as part of, of your welcoming email to the class, uh, your, your track assignments, and you have to track them down using online resources. Again, you'll have a, a sheet to look at that explains what you're doing. And then finally, um, you have a, well, not finally, but the next big assignment, the last one that will be due is the transformative composition assignment where you're taking an old folk song and you're updating it. It can be any genre you want. It doesn't have to sound like the Grateful Dead, uh, but you're updating it. If you're not someone who plays music, then you'll, you'll rework the lyrics, right? And uh, if you feel comfortable, even if you're not necessarily a musician, singing um, your lyrics into, uh, into a, a recording device, then that would be great. If you're someone who's very comfortable with recording instruments and so on, you could do the full production. That's, that's up to you. Again, you'll read the assignment. Then you, you have to earn 20 points worth of short prompt responses, right? Um, and that, uh, for each session, if we scroll down here, and then we'll come back up in a moment. But if we scroll down to the sessions themselves, and you see uh, all the other front matter here of the of the syllabus. For each session other than the first session, you'll see there's a discussion prompt. So for session two, what makes the, a song the song that it is, right? Uh, what can I change without it becoming a different song? When might I have gone too far? Or is that even possible, right? So we all know that we can play a song in various ways, right? But how far is too far? When does it no longer 
remaining that song? And that's, of course, a big question for the Grateful Dead. But really, it's a sort of philosophical question in general. Whenever we're doing updates of songs, what do we need to keep to maintain its identity is that song, right? Now, if you write just a couple sentences, then that's worth a point. If you write a paragraph, that's worth two points. If you really go to town, it can be worth more points, right? Um, but as long as you don't, as long as you do something where you write, write a couple quick sentences of your thoughts, right, then you'll get a point. And you do that 20 times and, and you have all 20 points. But, uh, you know, the idea is that at least sometimes you would write in a little more depth. Um, and that should prepare you for the discussion because our Zoom classes are not lectures. They're discussions, uh, discussion sessions. And then hopefully we'll be ready to have a, a good and thriving discussion. So those are the um, the requirements. The other one, of course, is participation, and that's 10% of the grade, uh, 20 points, right, because it's 200 points total, so 10% of the grade. And I do expect you to speak in class. If you're shy, you can just use the chat window if you feel awkward about speaking, or you can even write me emails if you feel so awkward that you, you don't want anyone else to hear your ideas but me. But you have to participate or else you'll lose 10% of your grade and you don't want to do that. I would encourage you, I'm not going to require you to keep your cameras on during the Zoom sessions, but one of the complaints I got from a lot of students last semester was that other students weren't keeping their cameras on and that made them feel less engaged and I can see that I also don't feel right requiring people to put their cameras on but if you feel at all comfortable doing so I would encourage you to do it the materials the assignments the mystery tracks they're all on a Dropbox and you just click that and it'll go right to the Dropbox um, occasionally I'll ask you to listen to a podcast from my um, podcast Sound Philosophy and um, I encourage you to subscribe to that podcast see the link there it's on Spotify it's on Anchor it's on a couple other venues um, You, it's literally three episodes I expect you to listen to and there will be worksheets for two of those um, the listening for each session is listed and you can find those things on Spotify and YouTube and so, so on uh, sometimes I provide a link if I think it's a little harder to find um, for whatever reason, but a lot of times I don't. Um, you have to prepare for that session, right? We talked about participation. With the assignments, um, with the application worksheets, of course, you just fill out the worksheets, save your work, and send them back to me. Um, your other writing assignments, I accept PDFs, Word docx, or pages formats. If for whatever reason I can't open it, I'll just ask you to resend it and you have to do it right away obviously to not incur late points um and you know if i ask you to resend it you should probably send it as a pdf because those are pretty much guaranteed to open computer malfunctions are not an excuse for late work and so on and late work does drop 10 percent per day the worksheets are not allowed to be late at all. Those have to be in on the day that they're due by 2 o'clock. So that uh, uh, preferably you send them to me at least by 1 so I can give them a quick look and know where people are having difficulties or what things they're not understanding or what things they're interested in. And we can base our discussion around that. So here's the course calendar and that lays out all of the, the requirements. And then we already took... A peek. You can see the plagiarism and academic honesty statement. Um, be familiar with that. If you need any accommodations through the accessibility office, you contact them. They send me some paperwork and whatever you need, whatever they recommend that you need, I, of course, will follow. And then you have the actual schedule of classes um, and you have an assignment for the first session, right, which is to get familiar with um, this one website and look around at other um, places on the Internet for information about the dead. Just sort of skim around for now. Right. Um, and I will see you on our first day of class, which is, of course, Tuesday, uh, February 1st, which is a week from today. Looking forward to it.